So what I want to do now for the next part of my talk is to try to describe some of the key roles that the state has to play if there's going to be successful development. Actually, these are key roles that the government has to play in virtually every society, but the particular roles they will need to play will differ from country to country. So the most important role is ensuring the basic functioning of society, ensuring law and order, the enforcement of property rights and contracts, and so forth. Some of the right want to restrict the role of government to this. Uh, but n as I emphasize, no economy has been successful with this very restricted role of government. Another key role is restraining markets from doing what they shouldn't. And these are things like financial regulation, ensuring competition, corporate governance, laws of making sure that corporate governance is, appropriate, uh, is, is uh, uh, well managed. The failure of the US government to play that role was central to the crisis. The government needs to function to make markets function like markets. Let me emphasize here the magnitude of the failures that have been the result of the markets not functioning the way they should. Uh, if you calculate the difference between the potential output in the United States and the actual output, the, the difference that has resulted since the Great Recession began in, in December of 2007, the difference cumulatively over the last somewhat more than five years is literally in the trillions of dollars. And even for a rich country, that's a lot of money. So the market, the waste caused by the market is greater than the waste caused by any government outside of war. And one has to understand the magnitude of these losses. And they were not caused by government, let me emphasize. They were caused by markets not doing what they should do. Uh, the losses were partly because they misallocated capital, but also because they totally distorted uh, the economy. Actually, advances in economic theory, some of which were referred to earlier, have helped explain why markets on their own often don't work well. Why we should not have been a surprise at these uh, disastrous outcomes. Uh, after the crisis, uh, Alan Greenspan, who was the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, was asked to testify to Congress about what had happened. And what he said, uh, was there was a flaw in his reasoning. There's a flaw that cost, as I say, a couple of trillion dollars. Well, let's put that aside. Uh, the flaw was that he had expected that markets would be better able to manage risk. That was the idea of self-regulation, and that's why uh, uh, he, he had been such a strong advocate of self-regulation. And he said he was surprised. But I was surprised that he was surprised. Because the one thing that economists agree on, and economists don't agree about very much, but the one thing economists do agree on is incentives matter. And if you looked at the incentives of the banks and the bankers, they had incentives for excessive risk-taking and short-sighted behavior. If they had not behaved so badly, we would have had to rewrite our textbooks. But we don't, fortunately. Uh, but the consequence of their behaving so badly is uh, this enormous loss to society. As I say, economic theory has explained you know, why things have not gone so well. In this particular case, the question is, why? One of the things we think about markets is that they're very, supposedly very good at providing good incentive structures. Why did they fail? 
And that was an issue of governance. And many of you talk about problems of governance in the public sector. But there are also problems of governance in the private sector. And one always has to look at both of these at the same time. So what happened was the system of governance in the private sector meant that the bankers got to choose their own pay system. In fact, there's been a lot of discussion of what we have uh, in Australia they have is say and pay. Uh, should the shareholders who own the company have any say in the pay of those who work for them? Now, if somebody is working for you, you would obviously think that you ought to have some say in their pay. But in American law, you, you don't. And when this was proposed in Congress, many of the CEOs said this would be the end of capitalism as we know it. Of course, it would be the end of capitalism as they know it because then they would be held more accountable and they would not be able to garner for themselves such a large fraction of corporate revenues, depriving the corporation of money that it needs for investment, for job creation. Well, that's an example of a failure of the market economy. And it's an example of the role of the state in the restraining role. We have to have legal frameworks to make corporations accountable. Another reason for the failure is what economists call externalities. If I undertake excessive risk, it doesn't have much consequence. It has consequences for me, for my family, but not for society. But when a big bank like Citibank or Goldman Sachs undertakes too much risk, it can put at risk the entire economy and bring it all down. That's why we have regulation, because there are externalities which they don't take into account in their decision making. The sad thing is that we had regulators, like Greenspan, who didn't believe in regulation. And worse, we had regulators who didn't understand why we needed regulation. And if you have regulators that don't understand why you need regulation and who don't believe in regulation, you're not going to get good regulation. And that's why it's so important to understand the particular social functions of regulation. So one example is making sure that banks behave appropriately. Another example is making sure there's competition. Adam Smith who believed very strongly in markets, also was aware that whenever businessmen get together, they try to conspire at the expense of the general public. And he wrote about that very forcefully. And that's why we have to have strong competition laws to make sure that markets act like markets. And this is a problem not only in developing countries, but also in developed countries. Um, and it's becoming increasingly a problem. Some of the most important industries, uh, the computer operating system, uh, search engines, uh, uh, are sectors where there is a concern about lack of competition. The consequences of lack of competition can be devastating. Uh, I was just in Mexico, and the striking thing about Mexico right next to the United States, is the cost of telephone calls is much larger than in the United States. And the cost in the United States is much larger than in India. Now, why are Indian telephone, telecom working better than those in America? And why is America working better than Mexico? Obvious. It's not the technology. The same technology is all over the world. In fact, some of it was invented here, some of it was invented in America. But it's not technology, it was, it's competition. And 
you've been a regulator who's worked hard to make sure there's more effective competition. There's been some problems that we won't talk about, but uh, uh, there has been, uh, that's, uh, in, in competition, it's worked reasonably well so far.